Hi, this is Miss Cairo. This is lesson 3-9, and we're going to be making generalizations when multiplying fractions within this unit. So for this lesson, what you need to do is you need to have your activity book open to page 89, and you need your whiteboard and whiteboard materials. And you're also going to need your notebook in a little bit, so get your math notebook close and ready for this lesson as well. All right, so page 89 is what we're at. And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to take a look at the heading at the top and it says predict and multiply. So we're gonna be doing basically two steps within each of these problems. We're first making a prediction and then we're multiplying and then comparing our answer with our prediction and seeing if we're correct. All right, and then the direction says, Predict whether the product will be greater than, less than, or equal to the second factor. Then compute the product. So there's lots of vocabulary within the directions. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to box this word predict. And let's write a more friendly uh, fifth grade definition for the word predict. To predict means to guess. So I'd like you to write to guess above the word predict. Say it with me. Predict means to guess. And basically what you're doing is you're making a guess before you know what the for sure answer is. Um, so to predict means to make a guess before maybe doing something or before it happens. So you might say, I predict tomorrow's going to be a very good day because it is Friday. All right, and then so previewing numbers one through nine, we have multiplication problems for each of them. And then we're looking at the factors. One of the factors is written in red. And why it's written in red is because, well, we're going to be predicting whether our answer X is greater than, less than, or equal to that factor. And before... Um, we even make predictions, we're just going to be solving, and I want you to pay attention really close to what maybe a rule or um, a pattern that you see is. So even when you look down further on the page, there's it says complete the statement with the greater than, less than, or equal to. There's going to be three rules that apply to these problems, but before I give you what the rule is, I want to see if you can come up with it first. All right, so let's take a look at number one. And we're gonna be in this video solving numbers one, two, and three. And I want you to notice numbers one, two, and three, they all have a similar factor or a common factor. It's three fourths. We're multiplying three fourths in each of these problems by a different number in each of the problems. And we'll be taking a look at them more closely in a moment. Um, so number one says two fifths times three fourths equals X. And you're going to make a prediction. Do you think your answer is going to be greater than, less than, or equal to three fourths? Why don't you take a look at the problem and think back. And if you have any prior knowledge and you do about multiplication, what do you think the answer is going to be in relation to three fourths? Do you think our answer is going to be bigger, smaller, or equal to? And what I want you to do, write a comparison symbol in that circle. If you think the answer is going to be bigger, you're going to have your comparison symbol open towards the X. If you think your answer is going to be less than, you're going to have the comparison symbol open to three-fourths or an equal sign. So do you have a comparison symbol there? Well, let's solve and let's come up with an answer and then compare your the answer with your prediction. On your whiteboard, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to write out the problem two fifths times three fourths. And let's go ahead and solve. Remember the first step is that we're looking to see if we can simplify before we multiply across. Can we simplify a numerator and a denominator within this problem? We can. Two and four share a common factor. Two is a factor of four, so we can divide them both by two. So go ahead and write out the division sentences next to two and to four, and then solve and cross out. And 
and then we're asking ourselves, can we simplify any more? And we cannot, so we're going to multiply across. Go ahead and draw a fraction sim sorry, a fraction line, multiply across, and what do you get as your answer? Did you get three tenths? Good. Three tenths is the answer for number one. Go ahead and write that in. X is equal to three tenths. And let's see how that compares to your prediction. So three tenths is our answer. So X is three tenths. Is three tenths greater than or less than or equal to three fourths? Well, three fourths is closer to one whole. Three tenths is between zero and a half. So three fourths is in fact larger than three tenths. X is less than three fourths. So um, whatever you marked as your prediction, good. Thanks for making the guess, but go ahead and erase or mark up, make a correct, um, we'll put in the correct one first now. Um, please mark that X is less than three fourths. We know that for sure. And then we'll look at these predictions and then um, we'll go from there for problems four through nine. We're kind of doing it a little backwards. All right, does number one look like mine? Pay attention to any, um, any kind of noticings that you notice with that problem. Let's move on to number two. Six six times three fourths. Please write that on your whiteboard with me. Does yours look like mine? Ooh, hopefully much more neater. Six six times three fourths. First step is we're gonna simplify if we can before we multiply across. And we can in fact simplify. There's a few different ways of simplifying. You're probably maybe looking at the three and the six or the six and the four. What I want you to do is just look at six six. What do you notice about six six? I notice that the numerator and the denominator are both the same number. What do we do if a numerator, or what do we know about fractions when the numerator and the denominator are equal to the same number? We know that that, in fact, means that it's equal to one whole. Anytime a numerator and a denominator is the same number, it's equal to one whole. So 6, 6 is equal to one whole. What I'd like you to do underneath 6, 6, please read the number 1. And again, before we move on, 44, 44 is equal to one whole. Um, 1,000, 2 is 1,002, 1,000 seconds is equal to one whole. Anytime numerator, denominator is the same number, it's equal to one whole. Please remember that. Okay, so moving on, we have one underneath it. And then just we're just going to rewrite out three-fourths. And now we have a new equation. Um, that is simplified one times three fourths. And again, going back to third grade, we learned this rule with multiplication too. What do we know about when we multiply a factor by one? What's that rule? Anytime you multiply a number by one, your answer will be the same as the other factor. So if I multiply one times three fourths, my answer will be three fourths. One group of three-fourths gives me just three-fourths. So that goes along with another multiplication rule. So for example, um, 23, um, 23 times one equals 23. Or one times um, four-fifths is equal to four-fifths. Anytime you multiply something by one, your answer will be the same as the other factor. So our answer for this problem then, 6 6 times 3 fourths, or in other words, 1 times 3 fourths is equal to 3 fourths. Oh, we forgot to make a predict. Oh, I ha forgot to have you make a prediction. Okay, well, that's fine. X is equal to, let's put in our answer, and then let's go back to the prediction. That's fine for now because I wanted to guide you through some of these problems first before we start making some really good predictions. Let's look, take a look. X compared to 3 fourths, remember X means our answer. We have our answer here. 3 fourths compared to 3 fourths, well, that's the same fraction. They're equal to each other. For your prediction, go ahead and add in that equal sign. 
and we'll make better predictions for the coming ones once we start to notice some common trends here. Um, above number two, so far, sorry, above the above six six, what I'd like you to write is I'd like you to write the number one, and that will help you remind you that anytime we're looking at a fraction that has same numerator, same denominator, you're basically just replacing it with one whole. And then your answer, we already know, even without having to do really any work on the side, we know our answer is going to be equal to that other fraction. All right, moving on to number three. One and three sevenths times three fourths equals X. I want you to make a prediction. Do you think our answer is going to be greater than, less than, or equal to three fourths? Go ahead and make a prediction. Use a comparison symbol, comparison symbol that goes along with what you think the answer is going to be in relation to three fourths. And then let's solve and let's see if you get your prediction correct. Do you have a comparison symbol in there? All right, let's try it. On your whiteboard, please write out one and three sevenths times three fourths. Step number one, we know that both numbers has to be in fraction form. So I have a mixed number here. I need to turn that, or we need to turn that into a fraction. And we know to do that, we're thinking of mad, multiply, add, denominator stays the same. 1 and 3 sevenths is equal to how many sevenths? Go ahead and try it. Did you get 10 sevenths? Great. And then 3 fourths is already in fraction form, so I'm just going to rewrite 3 fourths next to it. And now I have 10 sevenths times 3 fourths. Step number two, we're going to simplify if we can. Can we simplify a numerator and a denominator within this problem? Yes. I see I, there's a numerator and a denominator that are both even numbers. And I know anytime I see an even number, it can be divided by two. What are our two even numbers here? 10 can be divided by two and four can be divided by two. Go ahead and write out those division sentences, solve and cross out those division sentences. So you're left with a final product. Did you get five and two? Great job. Can we simplify any more? Nope. So our last step is to multiply across. Go ahead and do so. Find your numerator and denominator. Did you get 15 fourteenths? Great. I misspoke earlier. I said that was the last step, but that's actually not the last step. 15 14 so what's wrong with my answer? It's correct, but it's in bad form. It is an improper fraction. Our numerator is bigger than our denominator, so we need to turn it into a mixed number. Many of you can do this mentally now, which is awesome. If you cannot, you need to rewrite out the division sentence. You're asking yourself, how many times does 14 go into 15? Go ahead and solve. 15 14 is equal to what? Mixed number. Did you get one and one fourteenth? Great job. Okay, so let's put that into our book. X, our answer is equal to one and one fourteenth. And let's compare that to your prediction. Did you predict that your answer was going to be greater? Oh, well, first of all, is three fourths, um, sorry, is our answer one and one fourteenth greater or less than three fourths? This is definitely a bigger number. This is worth more than one whole. This is less than one whole. So one and one fourteenth is in fact larger. Did you say that? Did you predict that? Did you predict that our answer was going to be greater than three fourths? It's okay if you got it wrong. Go ahead and fix it now. Our correct prediction should have been that our answer was going to be greater than or x was going to be greater than three fourths. Okay, so let's take a look back at our three problems now where we were multiplying three different fractions or three different numbers by three fourths and let's see what they have in common or um, what they how they differ and let's see if we can maybe come up with um, a rule or a pattern in which we can follow in order to make better predictions for four through nine here's what I want you to do what we should have been looking at, and I didn't want to give this away until now, 
when we're comparing those red factors, or in this case, they're all three fourths, is we should have been looking at the other factor. And we should be comparing the other factor to one whole. I know, or we know from past lessons, that anytime you multiply a number times a fraction, you're going to get an answer that's less than both of the factors. So I see that two fifths is in fact, um, we're going to put less than one whole. I'm going to put a comparison symbol um, of greater than one whole. Go ahead and put that up there. Two fifths is less than one whole. One whole is bigger than two fifths. And then on number two, we already wrote that six six is equal to one whole. And we said, we came up with our answer that X is equal to three fourths. Our answer was equal to three fourths. And we saw that the other factor was one, equal to one. And for number three, hop on over to number three, take a look at the other factor, one and three sevenths, that's written in black. Is that greater than or less than one whole? It's greater than one whole. So I'm gonna do a greater than symbol away from one whole. One whole is less than one and three sevenths. We know from prior knowledge with working in other lessons, and even just going back to multiplication rules, anytime you multiply a number, times something that's worth more than one whole, we should get an answer that's worth more than that factor that we're looking at. So I hope you're following along, hopefully kind of pretty, I hope you're following along closely to what I'm saying. Um, it takes, this. these prediction problems take a lot of thinking and a lot of practicing. So if you're not following along or not understanding what I'm saying, stick with me and you will get it. But does your screen, does your um, book look like mine? Do you have the two fits is less than one whole? Do you have that six, six equals one? And do you have that one and three sevenths is greater than one whole? Do you have that in your book and you have your comparison, your predictions correct and your answers in? And we're going to be referring back to these three problems as kind of a guide for completing numbers four through nine um, within our lesson coming up, okay? All right, thank you for following along so closely, and I will see you soon.